algorithm right make it highly performant for complex and dynamic applications oh whoa 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 i mean it's not exactly sluggish but highly performant is too strong a word yeah all right by now i'm sure you have heard of hdmx okay but today we are going to look at an article right to compare hdmx and react and maybe we'll find out if HTMX will replace React. All right, so to kick things off, first, okay, for those of you who have not heard of HTMX, what have you been doing? Yeah, okay, but basically, think of HTMX as HTML, but with access to AJAX, CSS transitions, WebSockets, and whatnot directly in the HTML text as new attributes, right? So, for example, let me give you an example. Right over here, you can see this short code block with a button tag. And inside the button tag, you can see that there's a new hx dash post. Yeah, so you can guess it. So basically, when the user clicks on this button, yeah, the response from the server will replace this click me. Yeah, so this is just one example. There's also hx dash get patch, you name it. Yeah, for the various methods. Yeah, so that's basically what HTMX is. Yeah, okay, but let's go back to the article. All right, so HTMX and React, a comparative analysis, right? Choosing the right tool for web development. All right, so this was written last year, but it should still be relevant. And this is written, written by Theodore John S. All right. So in the realm of web development, developers have a broad, broad oh my god, I can't even pronounce that. Retora <laughs> of tools and libraries to choose from. Yeah. Two popular opinions, two popular options are HTMX and React. Right? HTMX is a lightweight JavaScript library. Yeah, that enhances server rendered HTML with interactivity. While React is a comprehensive library for building UI user interfaces. In this article, we will compare and contrast HTMX and React, all right, to help you understand their differences, use cases, and when to choose one over the other. I guess off to a great start, yeah. All right, let's move on. Okay, so the approach and philosophy, all right? So for HTMX. Okay, HTMX takes a progressive enhancement approach, enhancing standard HTML with additional attributes. Right, so basically what we just saw with the hx dash post, for example, right, and behaviors. Yeah, so it focuses on seamless server side and client side interactions, leveraging familiar HTML syntax to define behavior. Yeah, because a lot of those new behavior. Basically, they are enabled via the syntax, right, in HTML. All right. Okay, for React, on the other hand, is a comprehensive UI library that introduces a component-based architecture. True. Right, it uses a virtual DOM to efficiently render and update components based on changes in application state. Yeah, that's pretty accurate. Yeah. All right. Okay, okay. now let's go to purpose, right? HTMX. HTMX primarily focuses on adding interactivity to server-rendered HTML. True. Right, it allows developers to enhance existing HTML elements with attributes that trigger AJAX requests. Oh my god, AJAX. Okay, this brings back memories, yeah? Right, handle form submissions right and update the dom without relying oh my god without relying heavily on javascript frameworks i mean nothing wrong with that actually okay as for react's purpose okay react is designed for building complex user interfaces with reusable components all right true 
right? It provides a robust ecosystem for managing application state, rendering components efficiently, uh, that remains to be seen, and handling events and interactions. True? <sighs> all right, now let's get to the learning curve, all right? HTMX, with its progressive enhancement approach, right, and minimum additional code required, HTMX has a relative, relatively low learning curve. True, right, because all you are doing is modifying your HTML tags with those additional attributes, yeah? Right, developers who are familiar with HTML, all right, can quickly start using HTMX, right, to add interactivity to their applications. Okay, I mean, I can see how, yeah. All right, for React, the learning curve, right? React has a steeper learning curve. Are you sure about that? I mean, okay, let, let's move on for now, yeah. All right, particularly for developers who are new to component-based architectures, Fair enough, yeah, fair enough, right. Or the concept of a virtual dome. Yeah. Alright, it requires understanding concepts such as JSX syntax. Oh, I just realized the way I pronounce JSX, right? It sounds like I'm talking about the Justice League. <laughs> Alright, let's continue. Right, JSX syntax, right? Component life cycle, okay? And state management, true. Yeah, I would argue that component life cycle is very, very important to understand, yeah? Especially for React, yeah? All right, so for performance and scalability, right? For HTMX, right? Obviously, it's lightweight, yeah, because you will reduce the amount of JavaScript you need. Yeah. Right. It's fast and performs well for simple interactions. All right. It can easily, it can be easily integrated into existing applications and provides good performance for basic server side interactions. All right. I mean, Accurate description, yeah. All right. As for React, React's virtual DOM and efficient reconciliation. Am I even pronouncing that correctly? Oh my god. Algorithm, right, make it highly performant for complex and dynamic applications. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. I mean, it's not exactly sluggish, but Highly performant is too strong a word, yeah. That's too strong a word. All right. It excels in managing large scale applications with intricate UI components and state management. I mean, okay, let's move on, yeah, let's move on. All right, ecosystem and community. Right, for HTMX, obviously HTMX compared to React will have a smaller ecosystem and community, yeah? Uh, but the documentation is good. There are good examples and support for its features. And it does integrate well with existing server-side frameworks and libraries. I mean, it, I mean, duh. <laughs> you don't even know, you don't even need to know about what server-side framework you're using. Yeah, it doesn't matter. <laughs> So if you are using HTMX, yeah. Right, as for React, React has a vibrant ecosystem. Duh. I mean, it has been uh, around for 10 years or more, yeah. And a large community. Yeah. It offers an extensive range of third-party libraries. True, but sometimes when you have too much options, Right, too much or too many options, right, in terms of third library, sorry, third party libraries, uh, that becomes another issue as well. Yeah. Right, tools and frameworks to support 
development needs. All right. React's popularity ensures a wealth of resources, tutorials, and community support. Uh, I would like to add jobs as well. Yeah, jobs. Yeah. All right. Okay, so for use cases though, HTMX. HTMX is well suited for applications that require simple server side interactivity or progressive enhancement of existing HTML. Did we just read this somewhere above? Sounds familiar. All right, it is useful for adding AJAX functionality, handling form submissions, or updating parts of a page without a full page refresh. Uh, I mean, you make it sound like React is not able to do that. Uh, bro, I mean, React can do this as well. All right, as for React, right, React shines in complex applications that demand sophisticated user interfaces, right? Real-time updates and interactive components. Mm -hmm. All right, fair enough. It is ideal, right, for building single page applications, SPAs, dashboards, collaborative tools, or large scale applications with intricate. This, this feels like deja vu though. Did we just read through this portion previously? <laughs> state management all right okay so summary right choosing between hdmx and react depends on the specific requirements of your web application right hdmx is a lightweight library that enhances server rendered html with interactivity making it suitable for simpler applications Okay, React with its component-based architecture and comprehensive tooling is better suited for complex applications with advanced, right? Advanced, yeah. UI requirements and state management. Hmm. Right, consider using HTMX if you have an existing server rendered application and want to add interactivity without a major architectural overhaul. Okay. On the other hand, right, choose React. Right, choose React if you require a robust UI library. I wouldn't call React a robust UI library. I mean it's not exactly a UI library in itself. Yeah. Okay, with a powerful ecosystem, right? State management capabilities. Capabilities. Oh my god and the ability to build complex and interactive user interfaces. Okay, that part is not wrong. Okay. All right, ultimately, the decision comes down to your specific needs, project requirements, and the level of complexity your application demands. Yeah, I mean, obviously, yeah. Both HTMX and React offer valuable, valuable features and can be effective tools in the right context. No pun intended, yeah? I would say it feels like certain parts of the of the article is copied from other parts of the article. Yeah. And there's some things that I don't agree with. Obviously, React is not exactly a UI library in itself. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of, obviously, a lot of the things that HTMX can do, React excels at it as, as well. I mean, if you just compare it to HTMX, yeah. And did we forget that HTMX basically requires you to go use Ajax, yeah? I mean, I leave it up to you, but I'm not about to go back to use Ajax for now, yeah? So what do you think? Would you try to replace your React app with HTMX? Yeah, let us know in the comments below. And as always, stay awesome and stay safe. Cheers, man.